Full body tracking in virtual reality can get quite expensive. Whether you're looking at options from Vive or whether you're looking at completely different options from some other manufacturer. Even Slime VR that has now started shipping can be expensive for some, even though you can make it yourself for a lot cheaper. So it's no surprise to me that for a while now, people have wanted me to take a look at completely different alternatives. And I don't mean apps that track your body using a camera or multiple cameras or anything like that. No. First of all, people have wanted to know whether it's possible to use the Quest cameras that are already on board to track your body. Unfortunately, the answer to that is no. But people have wanted me to take a look at full body estimation. Specifically, Standable. Standable is an application that you can get yourself on Steam and it will estimate your body pose. Now, do not mix these two up. This is not full body tracking. As a matter of fact, there is nothing tracking you. No camera, no sensors, no nothing. This is a bunch of extremely smart algorithms estimating your body movements. This is not something where we can compare accuracy between full body tracking and estimation, because these two will, as you will probably see in the near future, not compare. Full body estimation gathers the data that it already knows from your body, like for example your hand and head movements, and from there it estimates where the rest of your body parts should B. This is not going to be 100% accurate, but it should allow for more immersion, especially in social games. So that's exactly what we're here to find out. What is up everyone? I'm Mystical, and today we'll be checking out Standable, which is a full body tracking estimation app for VR. So first things first, Standable is not free. It's $20, which is not breaking the bank. And they do have a demo that you can try out. Secondly, this does appear to only work on Steam VR, so you will require a VR-ready PC in order to be able to use this. Thirdly, let's download Standable on Steam and let me show you how to get everything set up and calibrated, as Standable does have its own calibrating procedure. So first things first, downloading and installing the app from Steam. I'm sorry, but if you need help here, you probably shouldn't have a Steam account. Once the app is on our computer, we will then connect our headset, whichever way you like, I'm going to be going through virtual desktop, and launch Steam VR. Now, inside the Steam VR overlay, you should see a bunch of different trackers floating around inside your Steam VR virtual space. You will notice that these trackers are not going to be 100% accurate. Remember, this is an estimation, but what this is giving you is it's adding those trackers which were never there to begin with. Meaning that if the algorithm is good enough, VR chat and other social apps that do support this should have something to go off of. It will not allow you to kick or do anything along those lines, but sitting down for example should look a lot more believable than it currently does. But that's what we're here to find out. So with that calibrated and connected, Let's jump into VR chat and see how well Standable truly does when compared to no full body tracking. First thing you will want to do is go into your full body tracking settings inside VR chat before we do anything and make sure that this is set to height. Afterwards, you will want to lock your head position. These are settings that I found recommended. And to calibrate, it's really, really simple. Once you jump into VR chat, you should notice that all those cubes are there. So press on calibrate full body tracking inside VR chat settings, stand in a T pose, flick your wrist to throw all the trackers into the calibrating pose, and then calibrate your avatar by pressing on the triggers. Then you want to flick your wrist again to jump out of the calibration mode, and there you go. Your avatar should now be tracking. So. I've actually found some very positive things about Standable. The first thing we did is we jumped into a test for crouching, which VRChat notoriously has a problem with, at least for me, with smaller avatars. And you can see that being compared right here. Taking a closer look at Standable, I was able to crouch a lot more naturally, and I was also able to move my hips and body around, and the character continued crouching. And continuing on, we see more of the same. Standable actually just makes the poses that you can make in VR chat look a lot more natural. It also has elbow tracking, which you will see throughout this video. Some people say it is recommended to turn that off. However, I didn't, as I wanted to showcase all of the software's features. So, laying down, for example, on the ground, exact same thing. VR chat can handle it somewhat, but if we take a closer look at Standable, you can see that it does a lot of a better job. Then I moved on to doing some jumping jacks to see how the software would handle jumping around and moving my arms at the same time. 
And VRChat already handles this pretty well, but once again you will see a big difference between me using the robot avatar and using the Shiba avatar, which is a lot smaller. For some reason, when I use smaller avatars, VRChat doesn't always recognize that I'm actually jumping, and just kind of moves the body up and down. Meanwhile, with Standable, the avatar did actually jump. And here are a few poses to show off that elbow estimation that I was talking about earlier. I do find this one really cool, as estimation on elbows seems to work pretty well for me, unless you move them really high up, and then they just kind of invert themselves for some reason. But if you don't do that, I do think it adds to the immersion a little bit. Walking around seems to be a little bit of a weird one, as I don't think Standable has the most natural walking animation, but it's definitely there, and the positioning seemed a lot better than VR Chat's one. For example, in Standable, I could walk and my body would kind of face the way I'm walking. Meanwhile, in VR Chat, if I looked at the mirror, my body would continue looking at the mirror while I was walking sideways. And I guess the easiest way to compare this would be to compare it to something like a Deca move where your body walks in the way that it's facing, and not where the headset is facing. So there you go, that's standable for you. No, it is not a full body tracking replacement, but that's not why we were taking a look at it. I do think that there is a market out there for people that want full body tracking estimation. Trackers can be bulky, and annoying to put on every single time you want to jump into VR. There's a reason that certain people prefer cameras to actually having to strap on trackers, and there's people that would prefer not have those cameras at all. And I do think that for those people, full body estimation might be the right thing. It isn't perfect, and it's not going to be anywhere close to the accuracy of actual trackers, but it definitely improves on what we already have. That and the Standable team do seem to already have improvements in mind. I'm sure you've also seen the meta research going over this video. Meta has gone really deep into full body estimation, and they've come up with some absolutely incredible things using AI. If in the future AI can utilize the room that we're in and know the poses as well as it looks like in this research, then maybe in the future we won't require full body trackers at all. But let me know your opinions down below. I would love to hear what you think about full body tracking estimation and whether you think it will ever be a viable replacement for FBT. There you guys go. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I do look at the comments basically constantly. So anything that gets recommended there, hopefully I will get to get to sooner rather than later. And now that we are slowly starting to push into the new studio, we're gonna have a lot more space to try these things out, which I am incredibly excited about. But that is going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess the fun works too. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day or night, wherever you are in the world. And in case you're not yet part of our community, check out our Discord and our Reddit down below, where I would love to see you posting your spice memes. Thank you so, so much to all the amazing names going off to my right. Those guys are my Patreons, and they are helping me out so, so much during this move. Either way, though, if you guys want to be notified about your content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.